All right, in this one, we will be finally setting up our C2 infrastructure in the cloud. Particularly, we're going to be setting up the Covenant C2 in AWS. Now, we are not going to be considering the OPSEC stuff super hard in this video. We're going to be just kind of setting it up at a very, very baseline, but I'm going to mention the OPSEC considerations along the way. This video is intended to be very accessible to people of all skill levels. Even if you're a complete beginner, you should be able to follow along. And if you want to see another video of where I set this thing up locally, go ahead and check that out uh, in the uh, end cards at the end of the video. It should be on the screen for you to go back and watch that because that might help provide some additional context. In future videos, what I would like to do though is actually build out proper C2 infrastructure with things like HTTP redirectors and everything else that I'll mention as we go along and build this thing out. Now, of course, you could build this in GCP, Azure, DigitalOcean, Linode, whatever cloud provider you want. I'm just going to use AWS for the purposes of this video because it is the most popular cloud platform and a lot of people are probably familiar with it. And as you're learning this stuff and leveling up as a pen tester and a red teamer, eventually you'll reach the point where you're ready to start applying to jobs. So definitely go ahead and check out the description below for the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you'll need to know to ace that next interview. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, of course, the very first step is you're gonna need to go and register an account on one of these cloud providers such as AWS. And once you do, uh, you'll be presented with a screen like this. Now, I have it in my recently visited because I, I use EC2 all the time. But if you don't, if you go to services, uh, you can scroll down and find EC2, or you could just search it up here. That would probably be the easiest way. And you wanna click here on the EC2 service. This is, as it says, virtual servers in the cloud which is going to allow us to deploy a virtual machine. So once you're here, you just click on launch instance, and this is where you actually build out the virtual machine. Now, since we are deploying Covenant, and Covenant, I believe it can run on Linux, but it's easiest to just set it up on Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and stand up a Windows VM, and I'll go with Windows Server 2022 base. And from here, I'm going to actually upgrade this from micro to small just because it'll help the video go along faster because using Windows with only one gig of memory is pretty dreadful. I mean, two isn't the greatest either, but it's at least usable. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose this private key file here. If it's your first time, you can click uh, create new key pair and it'll generate a new key pair for you. Um, as far as all the network settings, I'm just going to leave it default. One thing you can play around with is creating your own custom VPC. You could have this thing in its own private network and have like your redirector reach out to it and things like that. There's different offset considerations that you could uh, consider here, but I'm just going to leave everything default here. There's different ways that you can lock this stuff down better. Now, here's another great way to lock this thing down is allow traffic, RDP traffic, um, from anywhere or only your host. And here's another thing you can do is choose where to allow RDP traffic from. I'm gonna keep it on anywhere for right now, but one thing you could do to lock it down is only allow RDP traffic uh, from your host or certain hosts that uh, you would be reaching this thing from, and that way not anyone can just connect to it. But we'll leave everything else as is and click launch instance. It's going to take a minute to spin up the server and everything like that. Now, what I'm showing you guys here is the manual clicking through way. Really, if you are setting up a lot of C2 infrastructure, what you're going to want to do is consider using like one of those infrastructure as code uh, tools, like something like Terraform especially would be super handy for this. So you can already pre-configure all these settings and everything that you would want in the cloud and you could have it automatically provision everything for you without having to click through in the GUI. And this is really the next level way if you're spinning up a lot of C2 infrastructure. And that is something I would like to learn myself. I haven't played around too much with Terraform. I've played around with Ansible a little bit, but I would like to get more into that stuff and I could show you guys how we could apply this to a red teaming scenario where we're actually spinning up our own C2 infrastructure, uh, proper C2 infrastructure, right? With redirectors and all that stuff. 
maybe even like a long haul C2 and a short haul C2 and have a full environment built out. But for right now, we will do this the manual way because of course it is good to learn how to walk or how to crawl before you learn how to walk, right? And so we could go into instances now. This is where it should be showing up. And I don't think I gave it a name, so we'll just give it a name now. And as you see, I did test this out earlier. And I tore down those. They, they'll disappear eventually. I went with T2 small. And we see it's running. So if it said pending or something like that, that'd mean it's still building out. But it has ran. So how do we actually access this thing? Well, in this case, it has a public IP. So we can access it from our host system here. If we just click on this instance ID here and we can go to connect and it'll show us how to do it. We can RDP in since this is a Windows machine and we'll select connect using RDP client and now we need to download the remote desktop file and then we can click on this get password here and we got to upload our private key file which I hope if you hit create a new private key pair that you downloaded that key right there because you're going to need it and there's no other way to get it. So if you miss that and you don't have the private key, then you're going to need to scrap this machine, go back, create a new private key and come back here. So we're going to just do this to load the private key file, hit decrypt password, and that is going to generate a password for us. So now that we have that, we can simply click on this RDP file to launch this, hit connect. And now we're going to put in the password in order to RDP into our new instance here. Hit yes, and it's to get more resources and have it move faster. But from my testing, I found that T2 small was manageable. I'm waiting on these icons to load in down here because I'm gonna launch a web browser. And there's a couple things we're gonna need. If you watch the video where I set up Covenant locally, it's pretty much the same steps from here. That ends the cloud part pretty much. The rest is, is essentially the same as you saw in that other video. The first thing that I'm going to need to do after I get this off my screen is I'm going to need to install .NET. I'm going to install .NET 3.1. So I have the link to do that right here. This is the one I'm going to go with. And I can put these links in the description for you guys as well. So this will install the .NET SDK. We'll download it and then click on it to launch and install it. And the other thing we're going to need to is install Git for Windows. And I can pro uh, provide this link for you guys as well. And that was not, <laughs> that was the wrong link. It's actually, where is it? Copy URL. And yeah, it doesn't seem to want to copy for some reason. Um, oh yeah, there we go. So we have both of these things here. And it looks like they're still downloading. Here we go. This one's done. I can hit open file. And install the .NET SDK. Sure. All right. And pretty straightforward on the installation here. For both... .NET and Git bash. I'm just going to accept all the defaults. There's nothing uh, that you would have to custom set up for the purposes of what we're doing here. And after we get these two things set up, the only thing we need from there is to actually install Covenant itself. And of course, in this case, this is a, a private server. So, um, actually we do have a public IP, so we could try to see if we could connect off of that. Um, but really what you'd want to do for your C2 infrastructure, as far as proper OPSEC is you would want to have the C2 server only, um, at least the, the interface of covenant only accessible to you. So the way you could do that is you set up an HTTP redirector and you have it so that it's checking who is accessing that page. And if it's you or someone on your red team, allow them to see that login page to Covenant and log in. But if it's someone else, like maybe a threat hunter or something like that, like that, anyone else, they're just going to get sent to some decoy website, some fake website that looks like just a normal site. 
So that is something that you would need to configure um, in your redirector. And that is something that we can actually play around with in a future video and really fully build this out. Let me know in the comment section down below if that's something you'd like to see. Now it says the installation was successful, so we're good on that front. Let's go back to the downloads and I don't know what happened to that. So, um, and I think I double click that. Let's we'll close out of this one. And uh, what I wanna do is launch the installation of Git then we should be good to go. So we'll launch the file explorer, go to downloads, and we'll go ahead and launch this thing here. And everything is moving along pretty smoothly. There's a lot of things to select here. I'm just gonna go with all defaults. Um, there's no reason to necessarily change anything unless there's something you see that you would prefer differently, but just accepting all the defaults uh, will work. And so once this completes uh, the installation here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Git with elevated permissions. And I mean, I am the administrator user, so I could probably just launch it normally. But in case you're running this as like a basic user or whatever, make sure that you have an elevated instance of Git Bash running. And I'll minimize these windows while that's going on. And yeah, this one is not a very lengthy install. Just cleaning up a few things. I, you don't want to launch Git Bash here because we want to launch it in an elevated uh, terminal. So I'll type git. And let's see, it should show up. Here we go. Yeah, that was just being a little bit slow to load that in. I'll go to git bash. I'll right click, run as administrator. And yeah, here we go. Make this larger. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'll just go to the C drive. Uh, let's see here, CD, C. I always forget the, um, how you write it on here. There we go, it's forward slash C. Okay, so I'm at the C drive now, and let's just do this command here, this git clone. And that's gonna clone the covenant repository right here. And get all the uh, sub modules and everything it needs to run properly. So then once that's complete, all we need to do, CD covenant, covenant, and then we can do a .NET run. And the .NET is what was installed with that .NET SDK. And I will say this does take quite a while to fully build out. So we'll just kind of jump ahead in time. We'll I'll cut out all the waiting here because there's quite a bit of waiting. But after some time, it will say like, hey, Covenant is accessible at this location. And then we just go to in the browser to access it. So I'll see you in a second. All right. And once you see this message here saying to navigate here in your browser, then you're good to go. So what I can do is copy this, go back to the browser and we can access it through here. Now I know it says the local host IP address, right? But we could also access this through the IP address of this server as well. And I could show you that in a minute. But yeah, it's proceed to unsafe because we don't have the um, certificate set up. And now we can just register our initial user. And from here, everything is pretty much the same as what we saw before. So I'll create a password for my user account. And ideally what I was saying with the redirector is you want to set it up so that only you or your red teamers, when they access this URL here, only they see this page. Everyone else sees some um, dummy site. And then, yeah, now we're within Covenant and the rest is exactly what I showed in the previous videos. So like I was saying though, the other way to access this, right, is if you take a look at... Let's see what the IP address is here. 
we can actually access it through this IP as well, and it would work. And so another thing I would like to check is if I come off, come off of this, and you can see, like, the public. This is, like, your public DNS here. Let me go to this. It was 7443, I believe, HTTPS. I don't think it actually uh, will have that. I don't think it will actually bind to this public address. Let's see. So the way this is set up by default right now, I believe is only accessible through this IP or your loopback address, but not the, uh, not the public IP, I don't think. That's what I was testing out here. But yeah, just to showcase to you guys, this is a little laggy here, but what I could do is if I was uh, on another machine on the network, I could access it through here the same way. And you see here, we're still able to access Covenant. And then if we go here, we're not able to. So it is not, the way we have it set up right now, it's not internet accessible to like the entire internet. It's just on the, um, on the local network here. So as we go further down, explore the series, what we can start doing is making you know, adding on to this additional stuff, making this more real world, making this more practical by having things like HTTP redirectors, maybe multiple C2 servers, a long haul server, a short haul server. Um, we can even play around with deploying different um, C2s. Pretty soon I'm gonna, I plan on making some videos on uh, Cobalt Strike. We can even deploy Cobalt Strike into the cloud and different stuff as well. And yeah, the rest is, is pretty much the same. You see, you can use this as the connect address and stuff like that. And yeah, we, we'll have a entire uh, little test that we could build out. We give you a practice um, utilizing it. So yeah, let me know if that stuff sounds interesting to you. Is this content you would like to see? Or are you maybe not so interested in this red team stuff? Let me know. Uh, it's always a great way to gauge where you're guys interests are and yeah if you want to get into some more technical content i have that on the screen for you right now i'll see you guys right over in those videos thanks for watching